Mr. Trump, thank you for doing this. Thank you. So 13 days to go. How do you pull this out? Well, I think we're doing very well. The new polls just came out. We're leading in Florida. If you look at the lines and uh, all of the people standing on lines in the state of Florida, it's incredible. I just had last night, as you know, I was in Tallahassee. We had 25,000 people. We had 16,000 people the night before. We're, we're having, I mean, if I have a crowd less than 15,000 people, it's considered a small crowd. There's never been anything like that. Now, after this, I'm going to North Carolina, where we're also doing very well. Uh, the polls are indicating that we're leading in Florida. We're leading in North Carolina. We're leading in Ohio. Well, th there's a new Bloomberg poll out in Florida that shows you had. That is absolutely true. But almost every poll, public poll, in Florida and North Carolina taken since the first debate shows her ahead. Yeah, but all of the most recent ones, and if you look at the enthusiasm on the lines, what they're now talking about are the lines, because you have early voting in Florida. And the enthusiasm on the lines is unbelievable. So you're not fighting from behind? George, I think I'm going to win. I mean, what can I tell you? I think I'm going to win. I, I really believe that we've gotten a very unfair narrative from the press. Uh, I feel the press is very dishonest. I don't feel. I know the press is very dishonest. And I think we're going to win. I think we're going to win Florida. I think we're going to win Ohio. You know, it used to be if you win Florida, you win Ohio, you win. We're going to win North Carolina. We're going to win a lot of states. we win all three of those. Yeah, I, I think I will. I think I will. And what do you say? And I think we'll win... A lot more than that. We just got great numbers on Wisconsin, as an example. I think we're going to win a lot more than that. I did the first interview of this campaign on the first day Trump. You Cowley. did. You did. That's we're right. Here in a Trump hotel That's today. Right. But what do you say to supporters of yours who think you shouldn't be taking time off the campaign trail from the battleground states? Well, I think it's so time? unfair because you know Hillary Clinton goes to see an Adele concert last night, and everybody says, "Oh, wasn't that nice? Isn't that wonderful?" I have stopped, I did eight stops yesterday, three major rallies where, you know, where I told you 25 and 15 and 20 and it's thousands of people. I did three plus many other stops. Uh, I came here and let me just tell you what this is about. Under budget, ahead of schedule. I built one of the great hotels of the world. What am I supposed to do? Not show up? I'm taking one hour off. I'm going to North Carolina right after this. Then I'm going back down to Florida. I'm going up to New Hampshire. I'm all over the place. But I can't take one hour off to cut a ribbon at a, a, one of the great hotels of the world? I mean, I think I'm entitled to it. She goes, she does one stop because she has no energy. She's got nothing going. She does one stop and nobody complains about that. Nobody complains when she goes to an Adele concert all night long while I'm making two speeches at rallies with, you know, massive crowds. I come here and it's true. There's a narrative. You have it and a couple of the other haters have it. Donald Trump is stopping. I mean, I spent $200 million building a hotel, but you know why I really wanted this? And I love the fact that it just opened just before, because I built this hotel under budget and ahead of schedule. Now, that's why I'm doing this. That's one of the, I think I'd be here anyway. It sends okay. a message, front page of the no, world. No, it sends, you know what it does? It sends a real message, George, because we have road projects and tunnels and all the things we're doing end up costing three, four times what they were supposed to cost, and they never get finished. Front page of the Washington Post today says you're not going to have any more fundraisers this campaign. She is definitely going to outspend you in the home stretch. To avoid that, are you willing to write a check to your campaign? Yeah, I am. I mean, look, I'm going to be in for over $100 million. Only $56 uh, million so far. Well, no, it's uh, 61 but I'm spending a lot of money, and that doesn't include everything. I'm spending a lot of money. Hey, look, she's spending nothing. She ripped off the country for $250 million. She spent, she has no money invested in her campaign, zero. In fact, I asked her at one of the debates, I said, why aren't you putting up 10 or 20 or 15 or something million dollars? And she didn't respond. How much more are you going to put up between now and Election Day? I would say a lot. I'm not going to say what, but I will be over $100 million, and it could be much more than that. You've talked a lot about the fact that you think this election could be rigged. I want to go back to 2012. You sent out a I tweet. Think the system is rigged. Election I think night, the system is rigged. 2012. This election is a total sham and a travesty. We are not a democracy. How was the 2012 election? Because rigged? I look at the way the media treats the Republicans and conservatives, and I see the way it's so skewed. If things are good, like this morning, I watched one of the networks. They were devastated when the Bloomberg poll came out that said I was leading. They were devastated when they went down and they interviewed the people on the lines waiting to vote yesterday. And they were like devastated because they couldn't find anybody in Florida. They couldn't find anybody wanting to vote for, for Hillary. Uh, look, uh, it's so skewed. The media is part of the but problem. But you called the it whole election so... a sham and a travesty. Oh, well, I think it was uh, horrible the way they were treated in the media. 
The only thing worse is the way I'm being treated. Look, I'm being treated. Hey, it's record-setting bad treatment, what I'm getting. It's the greatest pile-on in American history. I think beyond politics, the greatest pile-on. And that's okay. I'm okay with it. Because you know what? The people get it. The people understand what's going on, George. They really get it. I go to these rallies, and they're starting to hate the media because they see it's all a big lie. And not all. But a lot of it's a big lie. Now, at the but same you time, you the have some wonderful... Like a billion dollars in free media during the primaries. Well, I don't know if you call it a billion dollars in free when it's bad. I mean, they give me... I do things that are good. For instance, I open up a hotel. I employed thousands of people building it and opera. And they're all saying, why is he off the trail? Now, everybody's been saying that I have more energy than anybody they've ever seen. And you might have to say that. Nobody's ever done so many stuff. I start at 7 in the morning, I get home at 1 in the morning, and then I get up and do another speech at 8. And in the meantime, she's sleeping all day long. Look, she does one or two events. I do eight. Then I come to Washington, D.C. I cut a ribbon, and on the thing, it's, why is Donald off the trail? I mean, I've done so much more than her, and I can't take time out. But I'm off it because of under budget, ahead of schedule. If now, now, I will say this. That's a very unfair statement. What should really be, they should be talking about WikiLeaks and the horrible things that have come out about Hillary Clinton, the horrible things. They should talk about the FBI getting paid six, I mean, the, the head investigator getting paid $675,000, the wife, for a campaign contribution, essentially from her best friend. You know that better than anybody. And she's under investigation, and this is the man that's the head of the investigation, and the wife is getting paid six hundred and seventy-five thousand. Right, she was contributions to her campaign. Oh, all that's a terrible thing. Over. That's a terrible thing. Nobody's ever seen anything. Let, let's like stick that. on this election idea. And George, she's so guilty. She she deleted thirty-three thousand emails. They're missing boxes of emails. She's so guilty. How can she even run? You have to see. There's such anger in this country. And the anger is about that, but there's such anger in this country over what she got away with. The FBI director, appointed by a Republican, said no reasonable prosecutor would bring this case. Well, he's, he made a mistake, okay? Or, or whatever. I, I, I don't even call it a mistake. I think something happened. Look, something happened. You what go happened? into the F. Well, I think somebody talked to him. I think, hey, look, how can President Clinton, when so you're the attorney the head general, of the FBI says is something going on, George, George. She's so guilty. Congress sends a subpoena. She deletes all of her emails, okay? She deletes them. Now, there are other things also, many other things. But just take that one. Don't even talk about anything else. There are many, many other things. Missing boxes of emails, uh, deleting emails after they send her. Now, who's more important in terms of getting a subpoena than the United States Congress? She deletes 33,000 emails and gets away with it. And yet General Cartwright could go to jail you, for, for, George, General Cartwright, four-star general, could go to jail, think of this, for five years. You've made the point that you and think. And Petraeus, his life has been destroyed. You've Great made the general. point that you think she's guilty. But if she does, uh, I know no, you no, think. No, I don't think she's guilty. I know she's if, guilty. If she wins, I know you think you're going to win. But if she wins, if she gets the kind of win that President Obama got, more than 300 electoral votes, several million in the popular vote. Will you accept George, that as a clear result? Times. I'll make that decision at the right time. I mean, don't worry about it. I'll make the decision at the right time. But we have a rigged system. And I'll tell you how the system's rigged. It's rigged by the media, because it's totally unfair and biased. It's rigged by the media, and it's rigged when you see somebody running for office who shouldn't be allowed to run for office. Hillary Clinton deleted 33,000 emails. Do you know what was on those emails? And she said they were for the wedding and her spa, okay? Yoga classes. 33,000 emails. I would tell you what was on those emails was horrendous. Look at what's coming out with WikiLinks. Look at what they're saying where Podesta says that Hillary Clinton, running for president, has bad instincts. First of all, he should be fired if for no other reason he's very disrespectful to her. He says a lot of bad things about her. But he said she's got bad instincts. Bernie Sanders says she's got bad judgment. So if Podesta says bad instincts, Sanders says bad judgment, why are people even All thinking about what? U.S. For? intelligence agencies believe the Russians are behind that leak. Why don't you believe it? Uh, I don't know if they're behind it. And I think it's uh, public relations, frankly. Do you know what does bother me? I have nothing but, to do but with But you were even told George, that by the George, Republican head something. of the Homeland Security let me explain Mike McCall. Something. He said the same thing. I don't know what he said. He told you that he thought the Russians were Hacking behind it. Hacking is very interesting. Hacking is very hard to determine who did what, okay? You know that. 
Uh, people are hacking all over the place. Nobody knows. They don't know if it's Russia. They can't guarantee it's Russia. And it may be. I mean, it may be Russia. I have nothing to do with Russia. She likes to put the narrative about Donald Trump with Russia. I have nothing to do with Russia. I don't know money. I don't have deals in Russia. I don't know Putin. But why not accept our intelligence agency's conclusion? Well, I haven't seen the conclusion. But you know what? Hacking, I understand. And you really, it's very hard to determine who's doing the hacking. What I have seen, though, is I have seen WikiLeaks. And where they came from, I don't know. But they're real. And they're not even being denied. And the disrespect those people have, and the dishonesty, too, by the way, the dishonesty. I mean, the one that came out yesterday about, you know, the server and going to President Obama, so therefore he knew about it. That brings him into the picture, which he didn't want to be brought into that picture. But her emails going to him, and he understands, and these are supposed to be so you classified want, emails. You want the a whole special thing, I'll tell you what, the whole thing is a scam, and it's horrible. You want a special prosecutor to investigate Hillary Clinton, so now President Obama should be investigated as well? That's what you said no, yesterday. No, but President Obama made the statement that he didn't know anything about it, but in the meantime, he's getting emails. So it proved that he did know about it. You said yesterday she'd be investigated. You Who should be the, investigated? The president. Let them do whatever they want. Look, he knew. He lied. He certainly lied because he knew the emails because they were sent to him. Let's talk about Mosul. And that was a big deal yesterday. I mean, you do agree that was a big deal yesterday. Uh, it, was, it, was new, it was news yesterday. It Let's, was news. It was news. Okay. Let's talk about Mosul. Uh, on, on Sunday, you sent out a tweet saying that the, that the operation was a total disaster. The defense secretary is on the ground. He says they're making progress. He's encouraged by the pro progress. The former dean of the Army War College says this shows that Trump doesn't know a damn thing about military strategy. The Army War College, let me tell you. The element of surprise. I've been hearing about Mosul now for three months. We're going to attack, we're going to attack, meaning Iraq's going to attack, but with us, okay? We're going to attack. Why do they have to talk about it? Why can't they keep it quiet and attack? Now, as you know, the attack is being met with great, you know, resistance. Because they were totally prepared. Because the politicians are all talking about it. Because Obama is talking about it. Don't talk about it. Element of surprise. General George Patton. And you look at General George Patton, you look at, uh, you look at MacArthur, you look at these great generals, and I say it all the time, they're spinning in their grave. Mosul, number one, we shouldn't have even had to do it. Because when we got out, we had Mosul. Now we have to take it a second time. We had Mosul. We have to take it because Hillary Clinton and Obama left that big vacuum, and ISIS went in and they took she Mosul. She says you're but declaring defeat problem. before wait, the wait, battle let is me, over. Let me finish with Mosul. Element of surprise. One of the reasons they wanted Mosul, they wanted to get the ISIS leaders who they thought were in, Os in Mosul. Those people have all left. As soon as they heard they're going to be attacked, they left. The resistance the is... says 35 of them have been taken out. Excuse me. The resistance is much greater now because they knew about the attack. All I'm saying is this. We shouldn't have to be fighting for Mosul. We're only fighting for Mosul because Hillary Clinton blew it and gave it back to them. So now we have to take it a second time. Of great importance, why do they have to talk? Why can't they win first and talk later? Why do they have to say three months before the attack, we're going in? So you can tell your military expert that I'll sit down and I'll teach him a couple of things. If he tells you that it's okay to announce, ladies and gentlemen, in three months, we're going into Mosul, why would you say that? Why wouldn't you do a surprise attack, grab all these ISIS leaders? They all left, George. They all left because they happened to be smart. They heard it's going to be attacked. They left, and they left plenty of tough people behind because it's a tough attack, and you know that, and it's being met with great resistance. I would have done it much differently. I would have said very quietly to my generals, go get them, don't talk. They would have gone, they would have been, it would have been much easier. They would have probably gotten some people that they won't get now. And then I would have had a conference when it was all finished, and I would have told them what we did. Now, your man on whoever this gentleman is, I guarantee you, I can put my narrative before the American people and let whoever this person is put his, and they will agree with me. On Saturday, you said that you would threaten to sue the 11 women who have accused you of sexual assault. You know, I hate that you waste time. When we're talking about ISIS and we're talking about jobs and you're still bringing that up, everybody wants to bring it up. Look, that was just Saturday. these were false attacks. These things never happened. These people, I don't know these people, these things never happened ever happened. This was out of the blue. It was made up probably by the Clinton campaign. Do you have any evidence of that? 
Well, many of those stories have already been debunked. Many of the stories have already been debunked. As Actually, you know. the People magazine story, they brought forward six witnesses Why didn't she to write the story, the story 12 years ago? She says she was afraid. Oh, she was afraid. Give me a break. She was afraid to write it. She would have gotten the Pulitzer Prize. Give me a break. She was afraid. And she had the butler as a witness, right? Who no longer works for me. So she had the butler as a witness, except for one problem. Six corroborating Excuse witnesses. me. Excuse me. There was nobody corroborating. They said years later she talked about it. Look, the butler, she said, was there. One problem. The butler said it never happened. He doesn't work for me. No longer. He's he a good man. By the way, he's a good man. But he hasn't worked for me in years. They went to the butler. He said it never happened. Nobody so reported all these that. Women, why didn't everyone they talked to are lying? They made up stories. You know why? Fame or they wanted to help Clinton or something. They made up they stories. They came out after you denied George, the behavior. George, George, let's not waste any more time. These stories were fabricated. They're total lies. So you're going to go through with the lawsuit? We'll find out. Let's see what happens with the election. We're going to find out. But I'm just telling you, these stories are total lies, and you shouldn't be wasting time. And remember this. Why didn't you write about the butler? You knew about the butler refuting her story. Why didn't anybody write it? It's a very unfair press. One of your toughest critics on this is the First Lady, Michelle Obama. She says, your behavior, your words are cruel. They are frightening. This is not how decent people behave. This is not how people who want to be president behave. Well, what's she going to say? Is she going to say I'm wonderful? Now, look, she made the statement about Hillary Clinton. I've heard this statement for years. I had no idea it was Michelle Obama. She made the statement that if you can't take care of your own house, you can't take care of the White House. You know, I've heard that statement for she years she's having talking to do about with her Bill own house. Oh, come on. Look, you know better than that. That was during the campaign. She said about Hillary Clinton, you can't take care of your own house, meaning Bill Clinton then how can you take care of the White House? It was a vicious statement. It was covered at the time, and it's gone all over the world. I mean, it's a very well-known statement. I would never have used it, other than I saw the other night on television, they went back eight years and they played that statement. It was her that made but the statement. what do statement. you think about what she's now, saying about Now, all of a sudden, you. I'm such a bad person. Look, what is she going to say? Is she going to say, I'm fantastic? Is she going to say, I'm going to not let jobs leave our country anymore? We're going to keep our jobs? You have to see what's happening to our country. Our companies are leaving from Mexico and other places, and we're losing our jobs. Is she going to say Trump is better at that than any other human being in the world, okay? Which I believe I am, okay? I will stop it cold. We have so many things to do that, you know, but now look, she's the first lady. She's got to say what she's got to say. I mean, I understand that that's the game. President Obama says you should stop whining about the system. I'm not whining about anything. I'm not whining about anything. Here's another one. So eight years ago, Obama talked about the elections in Chicago, essentially saying how they were rigged, okay? Now it's, oh, nobody would ever rig an election. You have 1,800,000 dead people registered to vote, and some of them vote, which is interesting. You have almost 3 million people that are registered to vote in two different states. Now, I'm not making a big deal of it. I think I'm going to win the election. I think I'm going to win. You look at Florida right now, you look at North Carolina, you look at Ohio, you look at Iowa, you look at these places, people are starting to get, I mean, the press is starting to get very concerned. And I see it all over the news this morning. But you look at what's going on in Florida where the lines are four blocks long and most of those people have red hats on. Uh, I'll tell you what, things are going to be a You do sound bit pretty different. energized today. When you look back over the sweep of this campaign, going back to, to last June, is there anything you regret? Oh, absolutely. I'd love to have done certain things over, but you can't. You can't. But that's true in life. I'd love to have, have done in life certain things over, I guess. And you would have, too. Give me one. You would have loved not to have contributed to the Clinton Foundation, as an example. There are things that you wish you didn't do, okay? You came very close to the edge. You would have loved to have had that decision over again. There are things I would have rather, you know, not happen. But, George, all you can do is you put your head down and you have to go forward. But I'm really happy. Look, I started off, you were one of, actually, Jonathan Carl, your person, did just about, in fact, he was badly criticized in this building. He did an interview. I said, I'm seriously thinking about running. And he was criticized because everybody thought I was playing games. But when I ran, it was 17 people. It was actually 18. But it was 17 people, governors, senators, talented people, people like Ben Carson, who's a phenomenal guy who endorsed me. But but there were 17 very talented people, mostly politicians at the highest level. And everybody said, you know what? Trump can't win this. These people have been doing this all their lives. He's got no experience. 
And then one by one by one, they disappeared. And one of your competitors said, as they sat around a round table and talked about my entering the race, one of your very smart competitors said, they were all criticizing my going in, said, be careful what you wish for. Because he knew me. He knew me. He said to the four women and two men sitting around a table on a certain network, this one person said, very smart guy, said, be careful what you wish for. And when I went into the campaign, one by one they disappeared. Now, some are, I mean, they signed pledges. Everybody signed a pledge. Some are, you know, they can't get over the loss. They got beaten very badly. They can't get over the loss. It's very dishonorable that they didn't endure. It's very few, three. But I am really happy with the way it's working. Let me out. just bring one specific. And I think, most importantly, I think we're going, you know, this is a movement like that's never happened in this country. Even you will admit that. The, Even your friend Bill O'Reilly said it's the most incredible thing he's ever seen in politics. Okay. And it's a lot of it's because of the movement, because of the crowds. There is tremendous spirit out there for change. Do People you want change. Do you think you should have apologized to the cons or Judge Curiel? Uh, I have great respect for the Kahn family. I have great respect for, I mean, the son is a great hero. But if I were president at that time, Captain Kahn would be alive today, George, because I wouldn't have been in Iraq. So if I were president, Captain Khan's son would be... You did support it initially. I support The invasion. I never in, uh, support... Look, look, let's get it straight. I was opposed to the war in Iraq. I was opposed to the war in Iraq. And for the most part, the honest people agree with it. But right the from the beginning, the, the I was opposed now. Was pretty clear. That was way before the war started, and that was the first time I was ever even asked about Iraq, and I gave a very, like, I don't know, who knows. Right at the beginning. That was long. That was way before. If you look at just before the war started, I said, don't do it. It's a mistake. You're going to destabilize the Middle East. From the beginning, I was opposed to the war in Iraq. Then they did magazine articles right after the war started. I was opposed to it then, and that was 100%. Had I been president, Captain Khan would be alive today. We wouldn't have been in this horrible, horrible mistake of the war in Iraq. We made a mistake in going in, and Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton made a terrible mistake in the way they took us out. Because we created a vacuum, they, they got out so badly. It was so, it was so, I can only use the word stupid. The way they got out of the war in Iraq, was so bad. They left the vacuum. ISIS formed. ISIS now, George, is in 32 countries. Remember, he said the JV, Junior Varsity. ISIS now is in 32 countries. And Hillary Clinton, she says she's going to stop them. Why didn't she do it before? Why didn't she do any of the things before? You know, she's been there, George, for 30 years. All of these things happened. Now she says she's going to do this. Why didn't she do them before? Final question. I heard backstage Colonel Dolan said that you said Hillary Clinton was a tough and talented lady. She said, if I win, we have to work together. I know you think you're going to win. If she wins, are you prepared to work I with her? I just want to make that decision at a later date. I'm not saying I'm not or I am. I just don't want to tell you today. I want to make that decision at the appropriate time. Hopefully, I won't have to make that decision. I really believe we're going to win. We're going to win Florida. We're going to win Ohio. We're going to win North Carolina. I think we're going to win Pennsylvania. You have to see what's going on in Pennsylvania. The crowds and the, the people getting ready. I think we're going to win Pennsylvania. I went to school there. I know it very well. I have amazing relationships. You look at the steel workers, the miners, they're all voting for Trump. I mean, she's against those industries. So I think we're going to win Pennsylvania, too. I think you will be very surprised. We'll see. Mr. Trump, thanks very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. you said at the beginning, if you run, you'll win. You still feel that? I feel that. I feel that. I see the connection with the American people and my husband. And uh, he created a movement. And the crowd and the people that are behind him, it's unbelievable to see. Does it make you want to get out there yourself and help him out the final two weeks? <laughs> We will see. Um, my priority is my son, Baron, our son, Baron. And uh, I support him 100%. And I'm there for him every time he needs me. And uh, I might join him. We will see. She's actually going to make two or three speeches. Oh, 
and I will tell you. <laughs> Made some news right there. Yeah, okay. It is. It's, it's, she's amazing when she speaks. She's an amazing public speaker. So uh, she's agreed to do two or three speeches, and I think it's going to be big speeches, important speeches. You mentioned I think it's going to be great. You mentioned Barron, and I wonder, you know, we're going to be talking to the other kids in just a minute. How has the experience been for him? He, he's heard his father say a lot of tough things, heard a lot of tough things said about his father. How does he take it all in? I teach him, I explain to him so he knows what's going on, and uh, he's, um, he's taking very well. Uh, I keep him balanced and uh, just have him a childhood as normal as possible and he's enjoying his school and his sports. He's a great athlete. And I just want to have him um, out of the spotlight for now. Does he ask you about the news, though? Yes, no? all the time. He asks me about the polls all the time. That's and very cute. It's like his dad. He follows the polls. No, he's right. the poll part. How's he, he doing in the polls? <laughs> he's, uh, of course, he misses his dad uh, a lot at these days. But uh, he's doing great. And if you could look back over this campaign and say two things, what has been the best moment, what's been the worst? The best moment, uh, the movement that he created and uh, showed the people what he wants to do for the country. And the worst, I would say, dishonest media and unfair media. You guys talk about this a lot. What, what is so unfair? About what's about the coverage overall. Well, I, I can just speak for myself that uh, I don't want to mention a specific act, but so often they'll say, "Oh, Donald Trump said this or he said that," and what I said wasn't wrong. What I said was fine. If a Democrat had said it, if Hillary had said it, people would have, they wouldn't have even thought about it. But I'll say something that's absolutely perfect, George, and. The next day, it's headlines. Donald Trump said this or that. That comes now, with the territory, know, though, doesn't it? No, no, no. Look. I went to an Ivy League school. I was a good student. I'm a very smart person. I, I know what I'm saying. Now, there have been some instances where oh, I could have done it a little bit differently, but sometimes I'll say something that's absolutely perfect, and I'll get a call after an interview, like with you. Oh, did you say this or that? And they'll skew it so unfairly. But people see it for themselves, they make up their own minds. Well, they don't really, because what happens is you poison the minds. You really do. The media poisons the mind of the American voter. They really do. It's unfair. But the thing is, the American voter is really smart. I mean, I'm going to see how smart they are, but the American voter, I, I think the American voter is smarter than the media. It's clear you both feel very, very strongly uh, about this. Clearly, you know, we all know, and you've answered some questions about this since that Access Hollywood tape came out. You know, I'm automatically attracted to beautiful. I just start kissing them. He apologized to you for that. But you said at the third debate, you didn't apologize to her about the women. The stories are all totally false. I have to say that. And I didn't even apologize to my wife, who's sitting right here, because I didn't do anything. Was that OK with you? They were, they were lies. And as I said before, all the accusations, they should uh, be handled in a court of law. So you believe the lawsuit should go forward? Uh, yes, I believe that. And because to accuse somebody uh, without evidence, it's very hurtful and it's very damaging and unfair. And, um, but honestly, do we still need to talk about that? I think American people, want to hear the problems that we have in America. She's so right about they, that. She's so they, right about that. They want to hear what we will do to make America better. Let's talk about jobs. Let's talk about secure our border. That's what American people want to hear I, I, about. I think, it. I think people just to finish, I can't apologize for something that I didn't do. Nothing ever took But it's more likely to go away if you don't sue. We'll see what happens, OK? Let's see what happens on the 8th. November 8th. Have you thought more about what you'd like to do as First Lady? I will focus on helping children and women and also about social media in this uh, 21st century. What's going on, it's very hurtful to children, uh, to some adults as well, but we need to take care of children. It's hard to keep it away from your kids. Uh, it is, but we need to teach them how to use it, what is right to say, what is not right to say, and uh, because it's very bad out there and children get hurt by? By social media, by what's going on and by negativity. You give him advice about tweets? Yes, I do, all the time. <laughs>
Well, look, it's a modern day form of communication, George. And you know, I have between Facebook and Twitter, I have 25 million people. It's a, it's a big asset. They have to use it right, but it's a big asset. But she'll but tell you when you use it wrong. She, she can give me very good advice, <laughs> believe me. But what she's saying is true, though. I've seen so many people hurt so badly, not just children. I mean, just people are hurt so badly by new social media. And she feels very strongly about it. She understands it very I'm well. Sure it's very dangerous for children. The New York Times was all the people they say you've insulted well, that's on okay. Twitter. That's okay. Most of them deserved it. Were you one of them? <laughs> Actually, I wasn't. I was, I was oh, a little surprised be, at that. I'm surprised. Let's go check it. I can't believe I didn't include you. No, look, I believe in fighting back. When people are against me, when they tell lies, you know, I have the power of this, this instrument. And frankly, sometimes I'll use that. And I agree, sometimes it will revert back, or sometimes maybe it doesn't come out. You have to be careful with it. What do you think about Hillary Clinton, not as a candidate? I know you believe that Mr. Trump will be a better president of the United States. What do you think of her as a person? I don't know her that well. I think she's out there fighting. I think uh, it's a political uh, machine behind it, behind her. Uh, she's protected a lot and uh, they will not say everything what needs to be said. And finally, you're okay with what happens no matter how the vote goes on November 8th? Yes, the live goes on no matter what happens. But he's gonna win? I think so. We're fighting till the end. Thank you both. Thank, Thank you. you very much. This is really a question for everybody, but it's based on something you said when you were a teenager. You said that your father's legacy is your legacy. How has that changed over the course of this campaign? Well, we're very proud of our father and what he's accomplished. Mm -hmm. It is amazing. I've been joking for a while that when we started even just this project, we said Trump was coming to Pennsylvania Avenue and we didn't even know at the time what exactly that meant <laughs> or, or um, the other. <laughs> how foreshadowing uh, a statement that would be. I humbly and gratefully accept your nomination. We've seen all of you out there all year long. Don, there's a lot of talk about the possibility of you running for office yourself. <laughs> Has this made it more likely or less likely? It's a tough process. It's a brutal process. But there is also that element that's just amazing to be able to touch someone that way. And I've seen my father doing that. So I don't know. My only mission is to get him there because I know he can make a difference. And all three of you, you're not in the family business yet. You're not still studying. Yet. I just for the... graduated in May. So. <laughs> yes. Are you interested? Of course I'm interested. I think um, I'm applying to law school, though, so I like to bring a, a different kind of skill set to the company. All three of you are senior vice presidents of the Trump Organization. So I want to ask you a good question I asked your dad. There have been several stories recently suggesting that your brand has taken a hit over the course of this campaign. How worried are you by that? What are you going to do about it? So I think we have the hottest brand in the world right now, and I think buildings like this are a testament to what we do every day. Some of these studies are showing less foot traffic in some of the businesses. There's one, I guess, apartment in New York trying to get the Trump name off the building on Riverside Drive. Well, so I think the brand is much more than New York City, right? This is a global brand. I mean, when you look at the people that he's touching on a daily basis, the presidency fixing America is so much bigger than any of that regardless. I think the brand is hotter than it's ever been, but it doesn't matter to me. I don't care. It doesn't matter. I don't care about the brand. I care about the country. Ivanka, you've got your own business on. I wonder what you say to the women who've started this grab your wallet um, campaign on Twitter to boycott your collection. How does that make you feel? And, and what do you want to say to those women who are doing it? Well, the beauty of America is people can do what they like. But I'd prefer to talk to the millions, tens of millions of American women who are inspired by the brand and the message that I've created. My advocacy of women trying to empower them at all aspects of their life started long before this presidential campaign did. I've never politicized that message. People who are seeking to politicize it because they may disagree with the politics of my father, there's nothing I can do to change that. And, and all of you, you're going to stick with the business even if your dad wins? <laughs> we're, we're, we're building. So, you know, it's, it's been an awesome to be yeah. a small cog in the wheel. Okay, be honest. Which one of you predicted you all would be here today this close to the election? I don't think any of us got that far ahead of ourselves when he first announced his candidacy. We're not a political family. I think we were attempting to understand real time what that meant in terms of our future and our lives. In retrospect, 
I don't think any of us would tell you we're surprised. I've never in the past seen him fail, and, and this is obviously on, on another level in terms of his commitment to this country and its people. You're surprised? Well, I guess, you know, a lot of people are surprised in terms of the press, et cetera, but I think probably I wouldn't have done it if I didn't think I could win. You know, if I thought I was going to be knocked out nine people ago, I would have probably said I won't do it. So uh, I can't say I'm surprised. It's really about making America great again. That's what it's about. That's why I'm doing this.